now audible sir so uh yeah you are audible but are able to see you uh just a moment sir just a moment sir good evening sir tara shankar here sir ha ah, ji ha ah, ji good evening good evening uh, how are you sir very good very good uh i would like to welcome you sir uh, because the timing was of 4 o'clock so uh, professor gupta has gone in the ministry for a meeting so i would be uh, continuing with this session sure 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 uh, dear participants i, I would like to uh, welcome sir and uh, a small uh, introduction Uh, Raghunath sir is a professor of strategy area at I am Bangalore. Uh, his specialization is strategic alliance and strategic uh, leadership. He is also the chairperson for the Center for Corporate Governance and Citizenship at I am uh, Bangalore. Uh, sir was the global director of international masters program for practicing managers. He has got uh, 24 years of experience, very uh, high profile experience. He has number of uh, Uh, entities he has worked with like uh, agriculture finance corporation union bank kendra bank state bank of india a lot of consultancy he has given so i won't take much time and i will directly hand over to you sir uh, over to you sir for your session sir thank you thank you very much so do, do we have uh, sharing uh, rights on the powerpoint yes sir you are uh, you are i have already shared this uh, given you the right for that right Okay, so good afternoon to all of you. Such a pleasure and privilege to be with all of you. If all of you can do a very brief introduction of yourselves, that will be very helpful. Uh, shall uh, we? Shall we uh, do sir, that? Uh, sir, we have two forty participants, so that won't be possible, sir. Two hundred and forty. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can see the participants. Yeah, we have two forty participants. Oh, I see. Oh, two forty one are already. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sorry, sir. I didn't correct that. Yeah, I was just thinking. the screen that is in front of me are the numbers who are in front of you okay 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 no, sir right, got it got it got it got it okay yeah i i am sure this is not going to be possible 241 right 245 now so uh, yes yeah, so let me then uh, get into what we are going to discuss today and uh, i am very sure most of you are on the boards of companies and uh, some of you are veterans in in boards and it is uh, very nice of you to join this uh, discussion um i have been on boards for about 22 years now in um, independent uh, capacities in manufacturing company boards in uh, private sector uh, service company boards in, in multinational boards in uh, public sector uh, banks so i have been on several boards and i have had similar experiences with all of you uh, am i audible to to all of you is 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 the yes sir you are audible sir is, is, audible. is the sound level okay for everybody yes sir it is okay and uh, after the your session there would be questions that, that they would be sharing in the chat box so accordingly that would be shared with you as well sir all right oh okay okay so uh yeah so that that's the most interesting part of the, the part relating to question so i must then quickly finish what i have to say and then open myself to questions which which is the better part of the session if you ask me so um so i, I actually uh, started off many years ago uh, looking at the possibility of uh, uh seeing how strategy as formulated and implemented in in companies uh, is uh, overseen at the board level so my research started before i became a board member in in the 90s and uh, i looked at particularly i looked at what is the role of uh, independent directors and you know what they really do of course there is a mandate and uh, we have the regulatory authorities who have always given us a charter in terms of what we are expected to do and how accountable we are and what are um, our essential responsibilities but the interesting piece in this research which i came up uh, and, and which was a revelation to me is something that i want to share with all of you so i am going to let's see if i can share um let's say share 
And then I have the screen. Are you able to see anything? Are you able to see yes. the screen? Yeah, yeah, we are able to see. Are you able to see the full screen? Yes. yes. You are able to see the full screen. Excellent. So um, if we if you look at the uh, board composition, as all of us know, we have the executive uh, part of the board and the non-executive part of the board. And the executive part of the board, as all of us know, consists of managing director and full-time directors. And the non-executive part consists of independent, non-independent, constituency directors, domain directors, a whole lot of them. And the triple dimensions of uh, independent board members is primarily to do with the contributing role, the counseling role, and the controlling role. So when you are an independent board member, you got to participate in the strategy formulation and validation. I mean, that's the expectation. Top management selection and succession and, and risk management. Uh, in the counseling role, uh, relates to appropriate means of achieving ends, uh, different approaches to the business and uh, negotiating stances when it comes to stakeholders. And in the controlling role, we're expected to evaluate performance, risk identification and management, internal controls and assurance, communications and reporting and, and compliance. So, you know, all of this is familiar to all of us. And um, if we look at what the company is trying to achieve is to make sure that from a management dominated board, it goes on to become a shareholder sensitive board. And these days it is not just shareholder sensitive board, it is also stakeholder sensitive board given the COVID situation. It is not just the shareholders, but all stakeholders um, who find an area of concern and in an area of contribution, which the board essentially has to manage for the company. So what we are saying is that when we are in board, we are mandated to really cover for the interests of several, uh, what what is this? I'm getting a I'm I, I am getting a message here which says Mr. Shah is requesting to annotate the shared content. What is that? What, what does that mean? <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, 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 is anybody here? Sorry, continue, you can continue, sir. No issue. Okay, so. So, um, so I was saying that the pr the primary responsibility is towards board uh, in, in terms of uh, firm performance, and firm performance um, is basically um, in these days it is also sensitive to international capital markets. So, international capital markets. The way firm performance comes across to international capital markets, and um, and 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 primarily that that really means that competencies inside the firm have to be deployed in a manner in which the firm performance is enhanced, and therefore it all starts with what is the clarity in the concept of business. What are the management practices which are aligned to the concept of business? And how is the organization structure and processes deployed in a manner in which you are able to deliver firm performance by adequate competencies being deployed uh, in that context? So, you know, th this is primarily the, uh, the lay of the land. And the board, as you know, has to defend the strategic plan to the shareholders. So what management has done has to get a stamp of approval. It is about revalidation if the market environment has changed. And these days, market environment indeed has changed. And, and it is a very onerous role in terms of 
what one does in terms of strategy and performance oversight, when we are presiding over a continuous perpetual battle relating to what is good for me as a dominant shareholder and not for all shareholders, which includes minority shareholders. So in course of my research, I found a managing director of a very large company saying that I have the confidence that if I throw a question at an independent board member, he will give me an unbiased feedback in the interest of the company. Now, the, uh, the critical part of the statement relates to unbiased feedback in the interest of the company. So when you are an independent board member, the CEO obviously is looking to enhance the performance of the business irrespective of the differences of opinion that arise between the stakeholders who have a stake in, in the business. So if the CEO, if the executive management really wants somebody who will be a trusted advisor, it is always an independent board member who is looking to enhance the interest of the company and not necessarily the interest of a particular stakeholder. So in my research, as I said, uh, I discovered that we of course have the mandate of what independent directors must do, but their roles differ um, in, in various companies. So when I looked at Axo Nobel, as you know, Axo Nobel is, belongs to the, uh, the house where the Nobel Prize is declared, right? So it, it belongs to that stable of companies and uh, th that company was earlier known as Courtauld's. And when they came into our country and, and they had independent directors, they actually had the independent directors primarily because they did not understand very well the regulatory and the competitive environment in our country and uh, they wanted the composition of the board in the manner in which independent directors through their board level de deliberations would provide an excellent guidance in interpreting uh, and in policy making so in interpreting regulation and in policy so the role of independent directors in that sense was more in the arena of interpretation of regulation and policy making. When I looked at HAL and I, and I looked at their independent directors, uh, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, what I found was HAL had a very peculiar situation. Government was the owner and government was also the customer. Though, of course, the ministries were different, but finally it was the government. So they had prior strategic commitments that shareholders and customers both on the board and there is general inertia. So what the independent directors were doing there was challenging the strategy, the direction, the policy formulation in terms of business in the boards. They were asking tough questions about the traditional customer base being governments, uh, various wings who have the budgets to actually make orders happen for Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. And it was the intervention of the independent directors which pushed for changes in the strategic direction of the company. Now, when I looked at Hindustan Lever, which later became Unilever, they, they had a culture of openness and they were pushing all the divisions on the basis of meritocracy. So, the board was an area where everybody was pitching very strongly in, in, in terms of dimensions of, of budgetary allocations and resource allocation in the larger sense. And the independent directors of the board became champions of pulling the organization together in one direction and, not, and saying, it is not just your individual PNLs, but it is the collective p &L of the company that matters the most. And it is not about 
who is the largest and who is the greatest or who is the smallest and who is right now very nascent. It is not about that. It is about saying that are we having a very clear perspective on what we would like to become as a company and therefore think about the larger picture while we are very good in whatever we do in our individual business decisions. So in other words, the independent director and the, and the set of guys there, they become champions of organizational cohesion and, and, and strategy implementation. Now, when I looked at a joint venture, which is British Aerospace and HAL, and I looked at the board, the board obviously had varied roles in terms of the joint venture formation stage and the joint venture operation stage. In the formation stage, they were there with the independent directors to make sure that there is the implementation of the outcome of negotiation between partners, in this case, uh, British Aerospace and HAL, and the operationalization of the JV and business generation because this had to go through multiple corridors of various ministries because this was defense. And defense, as you know, is a, a very classified area of for business performance. So, you know, they had to navigate and, and the board members primarily acted in those roles. And then later, of course, they got onto the monitoring role in, in the operational stage. So if you look at the uh, contributions that independent directors made in these various companies, in Axel Noble, which was called, called as Coatals, Coatings, uh, and Sealants Limited those days, the independent director came with an expertise on local context. In a very large public sector undertaking like HAL, the independent director actually played the role of a change facilitator. If you looked at Unilever, Hindustan Lever Limited earlier, it was about strategizing the bigger picture, bringing all the units together and saying, boss, where are we going together? Where is our organizational cohesion? Are we all pulling weight in the same direction? And in the joint venture, it was mutual exchange of expertise. You know, they, they were encouraging that and that's what they did. So when you look at independent directors and the quality of governance, the broad measures basically are, you know, in two buckets. It is the services offered and the control exercise. Uh, independent directors, when they come in, they obviously come in because of their stature, their, their domain expertise, and they enhance the uh, corporate reputation. They also help in opening doors and they are there to counsel and advise managers. And in terms of control exercise, they are there to evaluate the company performance and the management performance and make suggestions uh, which could actually improve the contributions made at the company level and at the management level. So if you look at the governance arrangements per se, there is this past and present focused orientation and a future focused orientation. There is this thrust towards being inward looking or outward looking. So when independent directors get into boards where the primary orientation, past and present focused and inward looking, most of the thrust goes into supervising executive activities. But on the other hand, if there is in orientation towards the past and the present, but it is outward looking, it is also about accountability in terms of benchmarking as to what the company is doing. If the orientation is future focused and it is inward looking, you know, obviously independent directors have a lot to do in terms of policy making, but if it is future focused and it's outward looking, then Obviously, they have a lot to offer in terms of strategy formulation. So, being able to approve and work with and through the CEO as independent board members is something that is a very fine art and science. And one has to inculcate that the, some of us who have been around in boards understand this very well. And the independence director's work, obviously, falls into two, two broad buckets of looking at conformance, uh, more bureaucratic word is compliance, and looking at performance. 
uh, which is also future oriented and therefore when we look at our roles in boards we realize that in boards some of us get on to trophy boards you know trophy boards are boards where independent directors get on because they are so very well accomplished so very well recognized in the industry that when their name appears and their photograph appears on a website or they are they appear in the company uh, annual reports and and uh, in in any other uh, brochure format uh, they look very good but then you also know that in terms of advice and coaching and monitoring and controlling you know uh, there is not much happening then there are boards where independent directors are more into the monitoring and the controlling aspect there is less of advice and coaching and then one becomes a nitpicker while there could be occasions where the board is actually looking upon the performance and contribution of the independent board member in terms of advice and coaching and not so much in terms of monitoring and controlling so you become a searchlight this generally happens when the company is in a growth phase or a institution is in a growth phase and they are really looking for advice and coaching and and that's where what you do in terms of your contribution and then if you are allowed to monitor and control as much as you advise and coach then you get on to the role of a tough coach so there are these multiple orientations which are possible uh when you are looking at your own uh, at at your own performance in terms of being an independent director so i think i will stop at this point and i will start taking questions which might be useful in terms of a discussion in terms of an analysis so uh shall we do that yeah sure uh, i would request all the participants who so is having a question please uh, switch on your uh, video and uh, raise your hand and then you can ask the question accordingly we'll give you the right answer do we have any questions jr shah i could see your hand raise so i am uh, unmuting you you can ask the question I have sent you a request for the uh, asking question. J R Shah. Am I audible? Yeah, uh, Mr. Surya, you have a question. <laughs> Raghunath sir, am I audible? Yes, 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 absolutely. Yeah, uh, there is a question by. Uh, Mr Arun his question is how does the role of an independent director vary in a family dominated board yeah so in a fa family dominated board it is so important to be a trusted advisor so if you are brought in as an independent board member there are controlling stakes within the family there are people who are having executive or operational responsibilities and there are people who are having stakes and they are there to oversee if everything is going well now as far as their own business is concerned these are all businesses which are coming down the generations right so this is generational business in many cases family businesses generally are 
generational businesses by and large. When they have generational businesses, what they actually require is a trusted advisor who will help them professionalize the management, who will help them access the market much deeper, and who would give them a visibility in terms of the windows of opportunity which arise from time to time. So, in other words, you get to become like the searchlight which we were talking about, right? So, you become more like a a searchlight who can throw light in areas where there is total darkness or there is confusion or there is chaos. And, 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 and that's a very critical role when you get onto family boards. And fa family boards also have, as you know, tremendous tensions when it comes to division of wealth, division of equity, uh, especially when the generational transfers happen. When one generation replaces the other, uh, we all know what the tensions are when they emerge. So the ability to be uh, a, a, a kind of an arbitration point, the ability to make sure that there is fairness and justice seen, and you being an upholder of that process becomes a, a, a important contribution when you are an independent director um, on family boards. Great, sir. Uh, there is another question by Mr. Pramod. His question is, what makes an independent director successful? Please share some of your experience of handling the conflict. Yeah, so, it's, uh, uh, so my question back to Mr. Pramod is, is he an independent director in any company? Uh, Pramod, you can respond by uh, on chat box itself if you're not able to unmute yourself. No, he is not. Uh, his response is he is not uh, independent director of any other company yet. No, he is not an independent director. So, uh, you know, you, you've got to face the fire for you to understand this very well. So, when, when you come in, you come in because you are there to ensure that whatever value is created is also dispersed in a fair manner, right? By that, what we mean by fair manner is starting with the shareholders and all other stakeholders, you are like a guarantor saying that, you know, this is all very fair. You know, we are looking at what value is being created. We know how it is being created. And we also know how the value is being dispersed and distributed. And all of this is very fair. It really ties back to the objectives of the company and the goals of the company. So the idea here is that when you are playing this role, especially in the current situation, independent director, as far as my experience goes, uh, you can only flag what you see, and you can provide them the guidance that they would like to take. About, about what, what I mean by they is, I'm talking about whole time directors and the executive management. So the key management personnel, KMPs who are there, got to heed your advice, got to take your counsel, got to take your questions in the right spirit and consider that as tough coaching and they should be able to go along with it. So there are varied experiences when you do this. And I would say that like a good batsman, you know, if you have ever played cricket, Mr. Pramod, you always have to judge the pitch before you lift the bat. If you lift the bat unnecessarily or swing it too hard, you know, you may lose your wicket. What I mean by that is, uh, yeah. you know, the yeah. whole idea there is if you are there, you have to be effective. And, and if you, if, we cannot be effective, then you know you are just occupying a titular role, which will soon uh, diminish in its in its own perspective, and especially when it comes to at the end of the year, then you know there is a rotation, and then you are not there, or or you continue. But the point here is that it is about being effective and being able to judge what is the role that the overall board process is willing to offer. And much depends on the chairman of the company. 
because the chairman is the one who presides over a board meeting. Of course, there is a managing director and there is a CEO, and uh, he has equal power, uh, not equal power, very, very powerful position in terms of uh, executive management. But the point here is that the chairman is also like the, uh, and especially if it's a non play, non executive chairman, he's like the non playing captain of a team. You know, he has the ability to bring and rally all the board members together towards a common objective, and that is to enhance the value that the business or the company or the bank or whatever other institution uh, actually offers. So much depends upon the context, the situation, uh, the board process, the chairman, and all of that, and, and how effect, effective you can be. Yes. Great. So thank you. I think Pramod, you must have got the answer. Uh, there is another question by Rama Devi. Her question is how to find a solution while company in a problem like some fraud situation. How to find solution while company in a problem That's like some fraud situation. Oh, if if the company is in a fraud situation, uh, how do you find a, a solution? Yeah, is, yeah. Is that, yeah. Is, is, is that the, is that the question? Exactly. So, uh, yeah, so I'm very sure there are chartered accountants sitting uh, in this August audience here and they, they, they will be smiling to themselves when such questions come. So uh, the, the point here is that, you know, it is always about the integrity of the financial information that is offered to the board, right? The board <laughs> only knows what it knows. It doesn't know what it does not know. And that's a fact. Those of you who sit on boards know this for a fact. So when you are there and more uh, appropriately, if you were to look at yourself as an independent director sitting in the audit committee of the board, then uh, you have better oversight on the financial reporting process and the sanctity of the financial information. So uh, if if you are really so keen, you should get into the audit committee of the board and you should perform your role very diligently and, you know, uh, make sure that you are checking for the entire financial reporting process and the sanctity of the financial information. Uh, you are also looking at issues relating to risk management and uh, making sure that, you know, the numbers which are there are, are real and which are in, in a sense uh, credible for the shareholders and the other stakeholders to consider in terms of company performance. So I would say that. Yes, please. Great, sir. Uh, there is another question by Mr. Ajay. Yes. His question is, as somebody who has no board experience, what mm. would you advise as something to look out in a board to join? First of all, you got to go and uh, check out in the market as to what is the reputation of that company. You have to check out with some of the stakeholders. You have to check out with their suppliers. You have to check out with their customers. You have to check out with their bankers as to what they think. They, 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 these, all these sources will give you a good perspective about what the company is all about. Because if the company is known for its integrity, if it is known for its quality products and services, and if it is known as a as a, a significant competitor in a certain market, then it is worth your time and why. But if there are reports that, you know, this is a dicey situation, you don't know who they are, what they are up to and all that, then you have to be careful. Great, sir. Uh, uh, there is another question by Mr. Ajay Khera. His question is, what to do if the functional directors, as well as the chairman or you can say CEO, do not like the ideas given by independent directors, even those being in the interest of the company? What does one come around? <laughs> what, what does? One come around. How to uh, you know, convince rather to the uh, chairman or CEO? So uh, let me give you a personal instance uh, in my own case. So I was a member of a, a large public sector company board and uh, 
the um, you know the company performance was placed in front in in in, in, in uh, or tabled for the board to look at. Uh, they were comparing the performance vis-a-vis uh, -vis the last year and the current year, and they were showing the growth in uh, you know they were in uh, four areas so four areas of business so they were showing uh, growth saying that look at the overall growth and you know these are the four areas that we are into business and uh, you know we are growing very well and look at the top line you know it is also growing very well and everybody was wanting to comment and minute and i said that is the incomplete information for us to judge whether or not our future resource allocation is in alignment with what is good for top line and bottom line growth the moment I said that, the the, uh, the managing director took offense. Um, after the agenda was over, the board meeting was over. You know, he invited me to his chamber and he told me, "Professor, what do you have against me?" And I, I smiled and said, Thank you. "In fact, I have nothing against you. I am all for you." And he said, oh, if you are all for me, why did you make that remark? I said, I, I, I'll repeat what I said. And I told him that you have posted in terms of quarter to quarter comparison last year to this year, and you have shown the top line and the growth and all that. And I asked a question saying that, boss, if you are going to allocate uh, your budget for the future, your resource allocation must be aligned not just with the top line. It must also be aligned with the bottom line, which is profits. He says, I don't get it. I said, okay, let me make it very clear. I want for every line of business, the top line and the bottom line. He says, why is that the case? I said, you tell me why is that the case? I, and, and I, and being a professor, you see, I, I don't care whether I continue on a board, right? So I, I just said, see, look here, just because there is a line one of the business which is the oldest line of business and it has the largest share of revenue i am not very sure whether the margins of that oldest business is the highest compared to line three of the business which is as recent as 12 months i said without knowing your figures i'm willing to bet that that business which has come up in the last 12 months and which is growing very fast is giving you a smaller revenue but a higher margin. I said, I'm willing to take a bet without knowing any numbers. You know, there was pin drop silence when I said that. He said, we will see in the next board meeting in the next quarter. I said, fine. And the next board meeting came up and they put all the charts and I did not say a word. I did not say a word because they acknowledged that that was correct that you know if they had to make future allocations on the budget they had to look at the profitability of the allocations making now as a thoni hai ke bhai aapne you know several crore bana diya top line mein bhi bottom line mein dekho it is running in thousands koi hasega bolega yaar for earning thousands you are you are actually showing a top line of crores it's so stupid on the other hand if you are making only lakhs in a certain business i went mean, to top line but let us say the margin there is 35%. That is a better place to invest your uh, budgets for the future rather than go behind an old business, which, you know, for the sake of the pride of your company saying that, you know, we started the company making this. Are yaar, you started it in your Baba Adam ka zamana. Today it is different. So don't you want to look at it objectively? So when you are independent director, People can misunderstand your statements, but I have always feel I I have always felt and continue to feel very confident when I actually uh, speak my mind because my intention is to improve the performance of the company and it is not to either malign or criticize the management. That's not the purpose. And therefore, I'm very confident. And when people mistake me, I'm willing to clarify. And they always see uh, people are intelligent enough to see your intention. So when they see that your intention is to actually support business performance, they come around. But it takes some time. It will not happen immediately. 
you'll take three, four board meetings for them to figure out that you actually mean well and you really don't have anything against anybody. It's a very long answer. Great, sir. Great, sir. But uh, very pinpoint and very to the point answer, rather, sir. Uh, uh, there is another question by uh, Lakshmi Suresh. The question is What is the role of an independent director in a hmm. public limited company? This is the role of the independent director remains the same everywhere. <laughs> the, it, it doesn't change at all. In a public limited company, well, you have the, I'm very sure the number of directors there would be pretty large and uh, the board will have people with varied expertise. They will all be domain experts in their own area and therefore you have to be conscious about and you must also take into account what everybody is doing and saying and uh, if you find that as independent directors you are able to make an independent evaluation of the performance of the company and if you are able to together come together and think about what could be a future strategy or orientation of the company, you should bind together. So in, in foreign companies, there is a concept called lead director because not every independent director has the time, resources, and the bandwidth to go through all the board papers, especially if the board papers run into several hundred pages and everybody is so busy. So they have a concept of a lead director who would actually take on the onus of directing the the uh, attention and the focus of other independent directors on critical matters and issues and uh, you all band together and think about the future performance of the company i mean that's what you should be doing great sir there is another question by ashok janji the question is when there is a potential conflict of interest between stakeholders and promoters you are advised to handle such situations sir yeah, so this, this is a, a very uh, dicey situation where we do find in all the uh, recent cases that we have seen that this conflict of interest is one thing that is really in a, in a way uh, ruining the performance of institutions, right? Whether they are... Uh, manufacturing companies, service companies, whether they are banks, whether they are uh, other institutions, you know, uh, th th this is a, a, a very, very dicey situation. Uh, it requires a whole lot of deliberation before the board meeting more than during the board meeting. Those of you who have tremendous experience understand that as per the code of conduct, we are expected to pay particular attention to the integrity of the financial information and related party transactions, along with safeguarding the interests of minority shareholders. So, uh, one of the uh, effective ways is to actually meet informally one-on-one -on -one before the board meetings to clarify certain things and check on certain things. And then during the board deliberations, bring a very orchestrated uh, position vis-a-vis -vis how, do, how does one really look at some of these transactions and how we are going to ensure that these things don't repeat themselves. So that's an area where I think uh, there has to be more effectiveness in terms of what is happening in corporate governance in our country. That, that's a very difficult area. It is an area which actually generates a lot of bad blood as well as uh, brings down the overall market cap of a company when these things start happening. Great, sir. There's another question by Raghavendra Desaiji. Uh, his question is how to make boards more sensitive from shareholders point of view yeah so shareholders have uh, shareholders representatives on the board right so uh, the shareholders representatives are always there and your shareholders representatives are there and you have um, so most boards also have chartered accountants as board members willy-nilly some of them are chartered accountants um, RBI has a nominee there 
So, uh, you know, there are ways and means in which all these balances, uh, checks and balances are uh, brought in position. So it is possible to, to do that. It is, it is not very difficult. One has to always be cognizant about what kind of a company we are joining in terms of uh, board deliberations and what is the innate nature of a company. In a, it, is, it, is a, it is a very simple thing. The, 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 the kind of uh, hiccups that you get after food depends upon the kind of food that you eat. So it is the same with companies. If the companies are actually dining out on, on a very strong and a very noble purpose, then you know the, the kind of deliberations uh, which are thrown into the board are also very positive and are of good nature. But if the danat itself is very different, then, you know, uh, niyat is the main important thing in this whole thing, right? So, you know, that is the way it all comes up. So one has to be very careful in terms of who do you choose? You know, people say in, in an individual context that tell me your friends and I will tell you who you are, right? So, so <laughs> independent <laughs> Independent directors have to worry. Tell me your boards and we will tell you what kind of an independent director you are. So, you know, uh, you know that's the way it works. Uh, there's a very straight question and uh, already said that sorry to be too straight question. The question is, uh, sir, you uh, must have made few mistakes and how did you solve it? <laughs> few mistakes? Yeah. In terms of maybe probably in terms of taking decision on board or other independent directors. So, but independent directors don't make uh, don't take any decisions. I don't know uh, unless you are. Of course, it happens that you become a chair of a subcommittee. So there are these various subcommittees on boards, and then you chair uh, the subcommittees. And when you chair these subcommittees, and especially if you are in the audit committee or the the nomination and the remuneration committee, you know these are very very critical committees and uh, the, you can make mistakes you're right you know you can make mistakes in in, in whom do you nominate and uh, you can make mistakes in terms of uh, the remuneration decisions and uh, in the audit committee you obviously as i said you know if you don't know what you don't know you actually are getting everybody into trouble so there are these uh, situations but the point here is that that is why I said that sitting on the board, it is like uh, making quarterly visits to a certain uh, area of uh, operations and thinking that in that one visit, you will understand, you know, the, this age old uh, British idea of inspection. People send inspectors. Are yaar, inspector jab aata hai, sab sida hota hai. I mean, they, they, everybody knows yeah. that the inspector is yeah. big, right? So, so this business that once a quarter you will go and check and you will become so very well informed that everything will uh, work is uh, a misnomer. Yeah. I mean, this is, I mean, you, you cannot expect to be God there, right? So if you ask, you have, you are actually bound by the information that you have. You are limited by the quality of information that you have. And to the best of your ability, if you make a, a call or, or you interpret it in a certain way, that's all there you can do. What can you do beyond that? Can you be asked, why did you not know the truth? Well, what is presented to me is exactly the basis on which I will act. No, but did you not know that they did not present what they did not present? Are boss, how is that possible? Yeah. This is not the pe People's Republic of China. Yeah, where you invade everybody's privacy and figure everything out. Sorry, I'm using such, uh, you know, uh, examples, but this is not <laughs> totally a totalitarian regime where you go behind everybody and know about everybody. So I think one should never think that you are saviors or angels who have landed on the board saying, hey, my God, without me, what the hell will you fellas do? Nothing, nothing of that sort. One has to be modest enough to accept that this is what I know. This is what I understand. And given the limitation of my understanding and given the limitation of information, this is what I do. 
and if somebody says you turn around says you made a mistake okay boss i made a mistake so what everybody makes a mistake on the basis of the limitations of information and knowledge yaar yeah. one has to and there is no till today there is no magic formula for the boat to do everything and every, about everything and therefore when people say that you know what in india you know all these uh, gotala is happening you know the boards are come on boss we are barking up the wrong tree one has to look at the nature and the purpose of business when the nature and the purpose of business that's why i say your what happens to you after you eat your food and what comes out out of your mouth that smell is about the kind of food you eat right it is the same thing about business if your purpose is elevating if your purpose is to ensure that the customers get more value for the money that they pay and your purpose is to deliver better value to the world than what the world has found through your business boss there is no need to do all this nitpicking through corporate governance and through independent board members why do you need police all the time only uh, only if you are a chore you need a police yaar we don't need chores then we don't need police i mean that sense i say police are not there for catching chores but the point here is that is not the way to look at governance governance is about future forward independent directors are there not just for say compliance compliance pakdo usko chori kar raha are yaar wo sab theek hai but the more important thing is that you have so much of experience and expertise can you create a better future for this company i think that should be the orientation of independent directors there is too much emphasis on going behind compliance it's my personal view this is not the view of any regulator it is not the view of anybody it is my view that when i go as an independent director i go there with my complete sincerity and commitment to develop the future business of that company my loyalty is to the business purpose my loyalty is not to anybody else that's all there is to life okay any uh, any other question we still have yeah, three yeah. minutes yeah yeah one yeah. more question uh, i think probably this will be the last question that i will taking so uh, so there are a lot of questions the question is by mr mahesh uh, his question is whether the chairman of audit committee should be part of risk management committee as well the chairman of audit committee can be a member of the risk management committee there is no problem at all you can be a part of the risk management committee the risk and investment are sometimes combined as a separate committee and you can always be a member there because you know uh, you you would have a deeper uh, set of parameters to judge risk and you will be able to even understand the projection of investments and all of that so there is no harm in being a member can we take one more question sir yes sure yeah uh, the question is if yeah. i am the chairman of csr committee or some other committee whether the meeting has to be held by me or by the cmd by you yaar the cmd should not be even be present if he is not a member of that committee boss i think this has answered the question and uh, let me thank you sir uh, on behalf of iica and center for independent director that you spare time for this session and uh, we have received lot of uh, praises for this session and lot of insight was there and i am sure that independent directors or those who are aspiring to become independent director is going to benefit out of this session and uh, to inform them this session would be uh, recording would be also available on our website so uh, those who couldn't attend they can see the uh, recording as well and uh, thank you so much thank you sir for uh, being with us thank you sir thank you thank you for the opportunity to meet some very excellent people very knowledgeable people and i'm very sure all of them in some form or the other would improve corporate governance in our country wish you all the very best thank you sir thank you so much